But I wanted to first start and talk about what perhaps was probably the biggest story of the season, their, their brawl and the beef they had with the New York Rangers. Uh, first question, how bad were your mentions on Twitter uh, <laughs> that Monday night and even the, uh, the Wednesday during the rematch? Yeah, I'm not sure they ever actually went away. I'm pretty sure people are still in my mentions um, about the Rangers. Uh, but no, I mean, it was definitely a super emotional, super heated night, uh, both nights. And I think everyone obviously has their different opinions on Tom Wilson. And, you know, I think everyone knows that what people think of him here in D.C. versus everywhere else. And um, obviously a lot of different information coming out there. But yeah, I mean, overall, a little bit crazy, um, but that's just hockey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a rough couple of days on Twitter. You, you had a great piece afterwards talking about Wilson's side of the story, saying how he felt that it was routine and that it kind of took on this whole new life afterwards, which it really did. Like, there's people all from all aspects of the sports world. It was kind of national news for a minute. Like, did, when you first saw the fight, and you know, you cover the team for a little bit, did you think it would blow up into the proportions that it did? Not, you know, in the moment. I think all of us are just kind of watching the game and you don't really understand kind of the gravity of everything when it's happening. I think, you know, Tom kind of described it well. He wasn't going to drop the gloves and, you know, start get into a fight. That just wasn't the situation. And so everything happened so fast that I really didn't notice it until we got to see the slow-mo, the replays up close. I mean, that's what everyone really did see. Not everyone was watching that game in real time. Um, so I think that's probably when everyone started to realize it. But you know, in the moment you do see Panarin being thrown on the ground twice, you see Tom flexing in the box, like all of that maybe um, led me to believe something else went wrong um, very early on there. But yeah, I definitely didn't really realize it until all the replays came out. A lot of the players kind of that same quote, um, you know, I, I think Lars Eller had a, had a quote about that, talking about how it was kind of the same thing as Wilson. It wasn't that big of a deal. Was that kind of like the general consensus was that it was kind of blown out of proportion? Um, I, I think from the capital side, yeah, absolutely. I think from the capital side, I mean, you're always going to back your teammate. Coaches are going to back their players. Um, and especially Tom, you know, he's already been in trouble once this season, obviously has a past as well, but this was kind of different. It was a post whistle scrum situation. Uh, it wasn't, you know, a hockey hit or anything like that, but yeah, I think, you know, everyone knows the name Tom Wilson. And I think everyone always jumps to conclusions when you hear Tom Wilson's name in any sense. Uh, so that's probably why um, maybe it just took on kind of a new life after the game. The rematch a couple nights later. I mean, it's just nonstop fireworks. Did, did we ever find out why Laviolette had the fourth line out there? Did, was that planned? Like they had like the, the Haglin Hathaway Dowd line out there to start and they, all three of them dropped the Mets at the, at, the, at the go. Like, did we find out why that was? Yeah, I don't think we ever asked why the fourth line was actually out there. I think, um, I mean, you have Hathaway, who's a fighter, Dowd, I mean, I guess has been kind of chippy in his career, but isn't really a fighter. And then Carl Haglin um, dropping the gloves, I think for the first time in at least a few years. Uh, but yeah, no explanation with that. I mean, obviously you don't want Tom Wilson out there from the get-go. I don't think you want any of your star guys like a Backstrom or an L like it just kind of made sense um, to throw a fourth line out there. I'm not sure if you'd want any of those other guys fighting right off the bat. Yeah, like from everything you learned after, do you, do you think the Caps' intention was to have six fights in five minutes or did it kind of just end up that way? No, I think the Rangers instigated all those fights, honestly. Um, I think Laviolette has gone with the fourth line starting a lot um, of these games or the third line. And so, you know, it's one of the situations where I don't think Nick Dowd would have dropped the gloves unless some guy in the Rangers said it to him first. And it seemed like in all those six fights, um, the Rangers instigated all of it. And I'm not sure if they actually won um, <laughs> any of those fights, but... <laughs> No, I, I don't think they did. What, was that picture of all six caps in the penalty box at one time the most unintentionally funny thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I think it was just funny. I think it made it more funny in the sense that when you look down at Madison Square Garden underneath us, there were six in the penalty box. And then you look across the ice and there's only six skaters on the bench. Um, I think that was probably the biggest thing was just seeing how little players they had and how many were in the box and just a crazy game on top of a crazy game. You have a TJ Oshie, you know, playing the day after his father's death and just everything wrapped into one um, just made for kind of a crazy night. Yeah. From, from like all the Rangers drama, like was there is what's like the most surprising thing you learned after all of that? Or just like what's one of the things that stood out to you the most when you're covering all of that? I think for me, it was how much of the attention was on a Tom Wilson and how much of it was like the emotions and the fights and how much it could easily get lost about a TJ Oshie, you know, a guy like TJ playing the day after his dad died. Um, you know, he flew out to Seattle, had to fly back the night before and just, you know, all of those emotions and it kind of gets swept under the rug when you look at a national scene and, um, you know, everyone's just kind of taking that first fight or at least yeah, the opening face-off fight and the six um, all in one. That's kind of the main takeaway. So that, that was probably my biggest thing was just 
realizing the national scope versus a local scope and um, at least for the team, what they'll probably take away from it. And I think for the team, that was a, that was a TJ Oshie night. 